Ice on your wrist, a plain giant. This is big white head. Um, and 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 when I saw that, I knew it would end up here. I knew it would end up all around the world. I knew this was something that we're not used to seeing: is people violating the church. And what I said the other day, I had real beef with this guy at one point that I really want to hurt. I needed to hurt him. It was a necessity. But he went to church. They baptized him. He went to church. And I knew that's off limits. And so, Bishop, uh, you're not, tell me, tell me, I'm, I'm going to go there with you, right? Where did you, tell us how you grew up. Where did you grow up? And how did you finally find Well, God? big bro, uh, first, I want to thank you for allowing me to be on your platform. Uh, like you said, we met uh, many times, and um, I actually uh, honored you, um, you, Papoose, and, and, and Remy at, at Christie's event. And um, I always respected you, man, and I right. thank um, you for, you know, supporting me and giving me an opportunity to speak to your people. So, I, you know, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, man, Crown Heights, Brooklyn, you know, and um, I'm from the dirt, man. I'm from the ground, you know, uh, at, at the age of six weeks old, my father was beat to death, strangled to death by 16 police officers because of the color of his skin. So I grew up without a father. You know, my mom, my grandmother, my sister raised me. And um, at the age of about 12, 13 years old, I moved to East New York. You know, and I also stayed in Brownsville, you know, Lexi Hughes Projects. So, you know, I'm I'm from I'm from the dirt, Joe. You know, I'm from the bottom. Okay. So you grew up in Brooklyn. Now when you get and I'm gonna break this down to you, right? Cause cause me and you talked a little the other day and we had a beautiful conversation. Right. See, I don't play with God. That's the whole thing. Now, I believe I want to be a preacher one day. I believe I want to give the word of God. The problem is I'm too much of a sinner, and I know it. And so I say to myself, yo, I can't play with God. God is almighty. He sees everything, right? So when that happens to you, I'm watching the news. I see it on the news. The first thing they say is controversial bishop did five years for scamming people. He did five years in jail. This, I mean, it went straight for your juggler off rip, your credibility, the minute on TV, right? And so we all know that you could be born again or whatever. Um, how did you get yourself jammed up and did that five years? And I just want to know when was the moment how did it happen that you said, I'm going to become a bishop and spread the Well, you know, word growing up, man, you know, you know, um, you out here and, you know, you know, you, you got friends from the streets, you know what I mean? And um, when that case came about in 2004, um, I was arrested in 2006 and it was like soft allegations. However, I was arrested in the racist, the most racist county in the country, Suffolk County. And um, yeah, and you know, Joe, and hopefully, you know, we do this again, but you know, they, they put together fake search warrants. They lied in motion saying that they didn't have no evidence. Um, I, got, I got five affidavits from five different attorneys who represented me that stated that the DA hid evidence to convict me. Um, I was also sentenced to crimes that I was found not guilty of. I was railroaded, you know what I mean? And um, as far as the grand lossity and identity theft, you know, um, nothing was taken. It, um, it was all attempted to be taken. And they trumped up charges against me because that was the first identity theft case to ever be tried in Suffolk County. So they had a point to prove, you know. Um, one of the things that they did was um, I was living in Jersey at the time. And Long Island wanted me so bad that they wrote an affidavit on their behalf, came to New Jersey, gave New Jersey the affidavit stating that they wanted to arrest me. 
New Jersey used that affidavit for their application to the judge. And New York came out to my house, put everything in garbage bags, put it in their trunk, and drove it back to New York. So nobody don't even know where this stuff came mm -hmm. from. And that's why they hid all the evidence from my attorneys. That's why they hid the search warrants from my attorneys, because they knew that it would have been fruit to the poisonous tree. But I can go on and on. I was... No, I didn't cop out. Cop out. You did five... So you, you was found guilty. Did you years. did five years in jail. Mm -hmm. Six years. So you in jail, Brooklyn. It's going down. You know what it is in jail. Um, The point I'm trying to get to is, how did you become a bishop? What came in your life that said, yo... So, so Joe, I was... You know, my grandmother, my mom always brought me to church. But before I went to the penitentiary, um, I was going on a year as ordained as a minister, right? So, you know, I wasn't getting in trouble or nothing like that. I was fighting the case, but I also owned my own mortgage, mortgage firm at the time. I was on Wall Street. I had employees. I had about 12 employees. I moved to the Empire State Building because my friends from FUBU was there. So I moved over there and they was on the 67th floor and I was on the 57th floor, you know? And um, so, you know, I had my own mortgage firm. I purchased, I bought my own franchise. And I was winning. I had my own real estate firm. And um, all of this stuff hit. But I was already a minister um, a, a year uh, before I was found guilty. So when I went upstate, I was already a minister. I was already changing my life. You know, um, when I went upstate, you know, I had to, you know, pound a few people out. You know, I'm going to keep it real with you, you know, because that, that's, <laughs> that, that's, that's all they respected, you know? Pardon and that's the only thing they respect. So you was a minister, pounding guys right, out. Right, right. They, they called me that. preacher. Anybody that know, I was in Sing Sing Correctional Facility, man. And they know preacher from Brooklyn. I was benching 495. I was 192. And I was huge. And I boxed. So, you know, it's like the Bible says that I can lay hands. So sometimes I had to lay these hands. You know, that, that was just what it was. You know what I'm saying, Joe? But I was... <laughs> yeah. And you was new. Nah, nah, it wasn't nah, no nah, 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 nah. I grew up in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Um, Joe, I, we wasn't. I wasn't used to that, man. Like the bloods, the you know, those are the young homies and everything. But I would never been in the gang in my life, you know. And they respected us, you know. And we all had our sections. And I was with, the, you know, we I was with the Brooklyn section, and we was, you know, we was heavy. But um, you know, so my life, my life always was always changing, man. And even when I was in there, I was reading the Bible, I was studying the Bible, I was doing what I had to do, and when I came home, I came home off a reversal. Um, I came off of a reversal. And um, when I came home, you know, I was already a minister. And I just kept pushing. I got ordained as a pastor. Um, and I started my church as a community organization. I was giving uh, turkeys and toys away every year and doing big community events and um, bringing the youth together, stop the violence. That's just what I was doing. And my main thing, I just jumped right into politics. And I would fund these things by myself or I would bring other artists in and they would donate turkeys, they would donate clothes, and I would bring healing to the to community. And that's how I started my church, Leaders of Tomorrow International Ministries. And a lot of the pastors and the preachers, they didn't like my style because um, I was just different. See, my style, Joe, is this. Now, now, mm -hmm. Bishop, hold up, hold up, hold up, Bishop. Right? <laughs> no. So now, you Gucci this, you Louis that. Uh, you also, I, I mean, I look at you, you look like a rapper. I've seen pictures of you. When it happened to you, I've seen 10,000 pictures with you and Gucci, bubbles, suits, this, this, that. Um, And so you represent a poor neighborhood, right? And this has been something, remember, it's almost like dead presidents when homeboy was the preacher, but he had the Cadillac outside. And so everybody looks at that two ways. Could something be going on with the bishop? Um, what is he really doing? Or is it cool for your bishop or your pastor to be that flashy or be that fly? I've had some parishioners, I had some people tell me, I want my pastor in the bed. I want my pastor to be fly. I've heard him. People tell me this, right? And, but what is it to you 
uh, when you see how people look at you and they say, man, this man is preaching to people that ain't got no money in the hood, but he got a million dollars in jury on. So you can see where people are looking for you. And you know better, you preaching the word of God. You know some people are good for you. Some people want your best interest. And some people are looking at you. In, in Spanish, we call this mal de ojo, with a bad eye. You know, um, so why do you take, take the approach of being that flashy and having that type of jury when you preach well, to poor Joe, people? Well, first of all, I don't think I'm preaching to poor people. That's number one. You know, and my church is not poor. You know, there's young ladies in there with red bottoms, Gucci bags, Gucci this, Gucci that. They're not poor. I have a lot of young people that just purchased their own houses. Uh, was it last year? I think three or four of my members purchased their first house. Like, like my church is prosperity. So when it's like every, like when we think about church, we think about poor. But when we think about the Jewish synagogues, we think about wealth. Why, why is it like that? It's such a stigma. You know what I mean? And everybody said that I'm, I, I'm in a poor neighborhood. I'm not in a poor neighborhood. I'm in a neighborhood where there's mainly one family houses that people own, right? And it, it, it's, it's, it's like we, as an urban community, have a bad name that church preaching to poor people, preaching to less fortunate people. And I think me, I represent a generation that, you know, if you want to wear Fendi, you can still love Jesus. You know, like Joe, you said you want to be a preacher one day. So why do you got to put down your Gucci, right? If that's you, that's you, right? And I can't change who I am because of what people say traditionally, traditionally I'm supposed to look like. That's not me. You can't fit me in a box that I can't fit in. So uh, where my church is, is not poor, number one. And if it was poor, I'm still going to wear what I want to wear. I'm still going to drive what I want to drive because now if I'm your shepherd, I want you to be better than me, right? Why do I have to come into in something that's not me, right? Just to please people. I always say this, Joe. I'd rather be an enemy of, enemy of man than an enemy of God any day. And I teach people, right, that I'm not, if you look at, <laughs> Joe, if you look at my sermons, I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm not a preacher that sit here and say, oh, the Lord is going to bless you. I need you to give me $1,000 and the Lord is going to, I don't, I, I don't preach that. I teach, all right? My church I teach. I teach the biblical academic and how to be disciplined in understanding Jesus Christ. I give you the instruments. I give you the literature. I teach linguistics of the Bible, the language of the Bible. Language is how you communicate through the community of the Bible. This is what I teach. Now, if y'all go on my page and y'all see me hitting people in the head and say, ah, oh, and give me a thousand dollars and get, you will never see that. In my church, we pass an offering around one time. It's for tithes and seeds. That's it. That's it. Whatever you give, you give. I don't press nobody. All you have to do is look at my ministry. I'm not on salary, Joe. And at the end of the day, we have this, this, this. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, bitch. You're not on salary, meaning you don't take no, no. money that's received in the church? No. So your money made from other yes. businesses and other yes. entities. Oh, so you're saying you're not taking no money from the church. You make your money as a businessman, an entrepreneur yes. outside of the church. Could you tell us I'm about some estate, of these I'm a real estate investor. Did I'm a real estate investor. I own two blocks. I own a community. I own a 48 unit um, 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 complex. I own, I own properties. I, I, I've i been doing real estate over 20 years. I Joe, I teach free real estate classes that cost $5,000 a, sem a semester, right? I teach about zoning. I teach about um, buying and flipping property. I teach about hard money. I teach about um, zoning. I teach about the academic of real estate. Like, I do this. So, therefore, this is what I do. I do that, and I have other business ventures that I invest in. I don't take money from the church. I don't have to take money from the church. Right? They say, oh, he has a Rolls Royce. My church can't afford my Rolls Royce because I'm still building. I have a community and I have a church of this generation. And at, at the end of the day, if you come to this generation with your hand out, they're going to go the other way. They're going to go the other way. So I don't pressure my people. I don't pressure my church to give. Hey, Bishop. Now, this is where 
the distrust comes from when people who don't trust you comes from. I'm going to tell you where, right? Um, besides you flashy, I get it. I wear jewelry all day. I don't care. I want to wear it. But I'm not a preacher, but still. But I get it. I want to be fly. You be fly. I get it. You're not a rapper. You're a bishop. The incident that happened, there was a young man. So back in the days, some kid gets in trouble. His mom goes, gets the pastor. The police is looking for him. They walk him into the precinct. It's a good look. He gave himself in. The pastor brings him in. So I'm watching the news. And it was a gentleman who allegedly killed the guy on the train. It was not bothering nobody, right? And so apparently maybe you know the kid or you know the family, right? So you had to <clears throat> set it up for you to walk him into the, right? The cops beat you to it. They went and locked him up, right? Then you held a press conference talking about why did they come grab him? You was going to bring him. Now, he wasn't a little kid stealing the skateboard, robbing from the bodega. He was a guy accused of murdering somebody. So what it looked like in hindsight was like you was clout chasing that moment and you gave a press conference, but not this. And so that right there, that move right there is when you get robbed on live television, people say, this guy, he likes the camera too much. This guy, he's flashy, right? And so you can see the distrust and so because you did so, that, so Joe, that Joe, didn't go well. Joe, let me, let me stop right there because I don't want you to go too far because I'm so glad you said that because now you give me the opportunity to let you guys know what you don't know, okay? So um, I was called by um, the young man's aunt. Their family follows my ministry. I was already dressed. I, had, I was already dressed to go out to do what I have to do. They called me and said, said Bishop, um, um, my, 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 my nephew is in trouble. I said, what? What's going on? You don't see him all over the news? I said, no. So she told me what happened, and I Googled it. So I said, look, the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure that he turned himself in. She said, okay. I said, no problem. I said, now, I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to call the powers that be because I don't want this young man to die. I said, we die for less. So if my name is on it and I start calling, I reached out to the mayor. I called him direct. I reached out to all of the, the top um, um, uh, uh, commissioners and chiefs of police. I let them know what I was doing. I set everything up. I got on the phone with the family. I told the family. I said, look, okay, this is the time where we're going to turn him in. Now, I need y'all to meet me um, at the 5th Precinct. Now, they had a legal aid lawyer, right? And I got on the phone with the legal aid lawyer. And I said, ma'am, look, you can see him when he gets turned in, when we turn him in. She said, no, 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 no. I want them to bring him down to me to Lower Manhattan. I said, are you, I said, are you crazy? I said, they're kicking in doors. I said, don't do this to this young man. Now, I don't know where this kid is. I didn't ask to know, but I knew he was with his family. So I said, do not bring them, bring, don't make these people bring them down um, to Lower Manhattan. I said, he's a wanted man. So the family agreed and said, listen, we're going to follow Bishop. We're going to meet Bishop at the 5th Precinct, and we're going to all meet there. I'm waiting at the 5th Precinct. No, I get to the 5th Precinct, and all these news cameras are there. I never called the news cameras. It leaked through the NYPD. I didn't, I, I don't, I, I didn't, I didn't call no press. So when I get there, I'm waiting for them, okay? I'm waiting for them to come. Then I get a text. I get a text from them, and I have all this document. I, I get a text from the family saying, Bishop, because I was calling saying, where you at? Where you at? They didn't pick up. I get a text and they say, Bishop, meet us at the attorney's office. I say, here we go. Here we go. I said, I don't know why they did that. So now I drive over. I told everybody, I said, I'll be back. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to get them. I drive over to the attorney's office and I told them, I said, listen, if you go to the attorney's office, I said, they're going to be staking out there. I said, because this young man is wanted. All right. I said, you're taking a chance. I go over to the attorney's office and we're waiting for him to come because they said they want to meet the attorney and then they're going to, I'm going to bring him over to the precinct. I'm waiting. I see his mother come in the door. I go out the door. He gets out the car. 
The police come from everywhere. They was, they was, they was hiding. They came from everywhere. And I was standing there and they just told him to get on the floor. And I said, I said, listen, I was going to turn him in. They said, don't worry about the bishop, move out the way, move out the way. And that's when they handcuffed him and brought him to the precinct. Okay. So I wasn't clout chasing. I set everything up. Yeah, but what I'm, what I'm saying to you, Bishop, is that once they grabbed him, you gave a press conference, and you were talking about, yo, I'm bringing them or whatever. So to people who just watch the news like me, right, it looked like you was upset that you ain't get the publicity for bringing them in or whatever. That's no. how people look yeah. at it, Bishop, right? No, no, so, no. I, I, the I'm only thing, to be honest with you, Joe, I'm the reason you. why... This is why when you got robbed, they were trying to discredit you on the news and do all that because you affiliated yourself with a man who allegedly killed the guy for no reason, right? And it was all this, like, camera time or whatever the case may be, right? So now, you get robbed. They used to rob churches back in East New York back in the 70s, right? You get robbed. They rob you on camera. First of all, Bishop, maybe th this is great. Who's the gentleman <laughs> to the left? Oh, man, that's that's one of my preachers, man. He all right, man. He was in shock, man. Yeah, yeah. He he. And at the thing, and and also, right, the 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 tape that y'all watching, it's not it's not moving fast. It's not. It, it's like a little lag, right? And if y'all was to see all of the cameras, the security cameras, then you'll be able to see what's going on. But he, he's a good kid, man. He's a really good kid. And he was in shock. That's it. You know, he he, he ain't about that. And whenever huh? he's got a gun on me, I calm down. I, I've had guns pulled out on me 1,000 times. Whenever somebody pulled out a gun on me, right. I calm it down. It ain't time to argue back or nothing. It's a time to be... I understood his demeanor. Stay calm, stay out the way. Hopefully this will be over. Um, and so the man in the corner, you know, he's staying out the way. So he's a preacher. So he's in shock. Uh, were you in shock when you seen the three gunmen just walk in the church and you're like, yo, were you in shock when you you in church and out of nowhere you had no indication they were gonna walk in there and they just walk in with masks and guns on? What was you thinking at they that? They violated it. That's the first thing I thought. I seen them swing the door open and three of them came in with their guns out and I looked and I was upset. And I just that's why I said, yo, yo, all right, all right, you got it. Because they came straight towards the pulpit. You know what I mean? They came straight towards the pool to, to where I was. And um, that's the first thing that I seen, man. You know, it's like they violated. I, I, they just, they violated. And I got down on the floor. And the reason why I got down on the floor is so that my ministry. So they violated you? They violated the church. They violated the, they church. Violated they violated the they church. Violated church. It ain't about me. You know what I'm saying? I, yo, Joe, Joe, I'm outside, man. I, I'm outside. I, I don't, I, I'm outside. You know, y'all you, could have did that outside. You didn't have to come into the house, house of the Lord. I'm outside. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hiding from nobody, you know, and, and it's an ultimate violation to come into the church, right? We, we, we not, we not promoting violence. We're not promoting violence. We promoting peace. We promoting forgiveness. We promoting an understanding with God. And then I see three masked men coming in with their guns drawn, telling everybody to don't move, don't move, don't move. That's violation. So therefore I got down and I told my church, y'all get down. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, if they got three guys with guns and they all, they, they, they cornered the church, the one in the back had the, the men with, or at gunpoint, and then the two up front had the front at gunpoint. So at the end of the day, ain't nothing you could do. Now yeah. they robbed your wife. And they put, uh, a, and they, and they put the gun to my, my eight-month-old daughter's face. Cause my my daughter was in her arms and I'm I'm laying down there watching it. And so all this is like slow motion, surreal to you. You're watching your wife getting ro robbed, gun to your daughter's face. Uh now, Bishop, right? Because the the the, the thing I sense in you with 
like it doesn't sound preacher like when you say you, they violated, right? And the thing I say to you is, right? You a man of God. Do you forgive these guys? Yeah, I forgive them, man. But Joe, you gotta understand, right? When you say violating is not a preacher word, let me just because I'm a preacher, it doesn't change my language. It changed my mindset, right? And and, and when you become a preacher, I I hope that don't change your 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 language. I hope it don't change who you are because you're going to attract a certain generation, right? And and I just think that there's a stigma that our language have to completely change. No, our mind have to change. The Bible says in Apostle Paul, he, in the Epistle of Paul, he says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? So at the end of the day, as long as my mind is set free, you know, I, I use certain language. So therefore, we will understand. I'm speaking to a certain culture. In the Old Testament, it was written in Hebrew. They were speaking to the Hebrew people. In the New Testament, it was written in Greek because they were speaking to the Romans. So at the end of the day, every language is suitable for whatever custom you're talking to, whatever people you're talking to. So everybody has a stigma of how I'm supposed to sound, how I'm supposed to dress, how I'm supposed to look. No, I'm supposed to look how God made me and I'm going to preach the word of God. So yes, they violated. Yes, I was upset. Yes, I turned Brooklyn. Yes, I was up. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. No. So, and so after I see that, I said, damn, man, they got the bishop, huh? And so immediately, everybody, I went to Brooklyn. I was out in Brooklyn. I'm telling you, bishop, I was out in Brooklyn. I told you this on the phone. And I asked a couple of cops. They were like, yo, that shit was a setup. I asked some gang dudes on the street. They was like, nobody violates the church. And it's kind of messed up that you get robbed, but people don't believe that you got robbed. They think you did this for this exact reason, that you're getting all this publicity all around the world, that everybody got you on the news. I saw you on the Spanish news with my mother and father. It was like, oh, they were going to miss it. They had you, yo, in the Telemundo, in the Spanish, with my mom's in Miami. And so, they think Bishop is so flashy. He know what it is to turn up, to go viral, to go this. Could he have staged this? Now, I heard you just explain they put a gun to your baby's head. That's off limits, right? Everything. But I seen you in interviews after. And I'm thinking church. I'm thinking God. And so I get, I see you get into it with a guy and a girl. And you no, call I call, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Joe. I didn't call him homosexual, oh. Joe. I called him, I called him a faggot. That's what I called him. All right, Joe. But let me, let, let me, let me, let me, let me touch on this real quick, Joe. Right, because um, I want to say this. Right, the reason why. Do you not? And I'm not trying to go there, but. Do you think gay people are no, not but, but, people but, of God? No, but 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 faggot doesn't mean God. gay people. It means a bag of sticks. That's what that really means, right? If if you if you want to get technical, That's no, I'm, I'm talking about Joe. If you want to yep. get technical, man. If you really want to get technical, all right? They hear bag of sticks. You know what I'm saying? He's soft, right? I I I don't have nothing against the uh the LGBTQ community at all. When I was running for bold president, they were supporting me. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have nothing against them. I have I have people in my church that was um was once that and now have changed. So like I don't have nothing against it's their civil right to be who they want to be. I don't go, I don't let me tell you something. If I preach a All right, this question. So you believe that if a person so you don't believe a person is born gay, you believe a person can change? Like, cause I see these things all the time that the church think if you're gay, they can change you back to listen, not being gay. And listen, stuff. Joe, Do Joe you believe anybody that? can change. And let me say this. My belief and what the scripture teaches me is that you're not born with sin. There's no way you can be born with sin. And if the Bible says that, and I'm talking about the Bible, when my church asks me to teach about how, uh, what does God say about homosexuality, I got to teach the Bible. Okay, this is what I'm teaching the Bible. This is not my opinion. This is the Bible. The Bible says homosexuality is an abomination. So therefore, 
And abomination means a hatred to God. So therefore, why would God make you to already hate you? It doesn't make sense. It's not logic. So biblically, you biblically, I'm just talking about biblically. Please, I don't want nobody getting mad with me. Biblically, it's impossible for you to be born already with sin. Impossible. Impossible. So let me just get back to the setup piece that you were saying. Let me tell you why people don't believe, don't believe that this could just happen. Because of what the media did. The media, oh, he was convicted. They start all the negative press, all the negative press to break down who I am and who I was allegedly. And now people are saying, yo, the street's saying that's a violation to the church. So therefore he went, he was a state before, he was in the streets before. You know what? This don't sound right. So it was a narrative that was built. At the end of the day, the truth is going to come out when these young men uh, um, get captured. And I've been praying for them. I forgive them. Right, I forgive them. If if they came and said we need prayer, I will pray with them. I will pray with them because at the end of the day, we all make mistakes, and that was a grave mistake that they made. It was a grave mistake that they made. And at the end of the day, who am I not to forgive? Like 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 I'm not a, like I wasn't a sinner. Like I I don't fall short. Who am I? The Bible says in Matthew chapter six, verse fourteen and fifteen, if you forgive your trespasses, then I will forgive you your trespasses. But if you don't forgive, that your trespasses, then I won't forgive you yours. So at the end of the day, if I don't forgive, then I can't be forgiven. So at so at the end, it 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 makes sense, uh, Joe. And my ministry, the way I dress, the way I move, is to encourage other younger people that yo, you can still love Jesus and 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 look dope. My Jesus is dope to me. My Jesus is not traditional. My God is not traditional. My God is style is not like corny no women are not coming with slips anymore right the whole fashion has changed it's changed the way we teach has changed so at the end of the day i want to be able to encourage somebody else that you know what yo god love me too have you been confronted by uh other pastors and preachers and people calling you from around the country telling you they hope you're right how's your family have you gotten like well wishes? Yeah, I got from well all wishes the other from churches? a lot of pastors, a lot of pastors, and I got a lot of love for the streets too, man. From the streets, man, they've been seeing me and they've been saying we support you, Bishop, and you know, so that that was really that was really powerful and profound to me uh, of of how the um, the community is responding to me, and um, you know, Joe, it, it's not easy, man. It's not easy. It's not easy to go against the go against the grain. You know what I mean? It's not easy, like. I'm not a traditional preacher. I'm a completely different preacher. My style is completely different. My approach is completely different. You know, Fabio Farmer is one of my mentees. You know, a lot of these rappers are my mentees. I, I have long conversations with them and I help them out a lot, man. Like I do other things, man, out here in this community, you know, and, um, and you know my ministry. My ministry is to bridge the gap between the streets and the church, between politics and the church. And that's why I try to educate them on something more than just the streets, man. That that's just me. But that's your question. You did, earlier you said you right. didn't get paid for preaching, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that that and, and in this interview, if I watched it and it wasn't Fat Joe and the Bishop, that would make me go, hmm, right? So everybody's misjudging you because you're flashy, you just fly, you young. And so when you said, listen, man, I got businesses. I don't take money from the church. Now, the, on, the only other question to ask you, which is an elephant in the room, is was the jury insured? Joe, I, 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 can't, I can't get into that league. That's legal. I can't get into that, Joe. I can't, I can't get into that, man. That's, that, that's, that's for legal purposes. Huh? <laughs> Mine <Mine's> is. <laughs> Yo, Joe, you crazy, man. Huh? Outside. Because we outside. So my jury, yeah. Joseph Carter right. Jada, right. is insured. No, I but can't, you can't answer. But answer. you know what? You know what, Joe? I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm gonna I'm I'm, I'm gonna answer for you, Joe, right? Because you my bro, right? Um the majority of the pieces was not insured. The majority of the pieces were not insured. Mm. And um um the majority of 
uh, because I had just changed up and bought some new. So I, and I have time to insure it. So about two pieces was insured. I'm I'm keeping it real with you, man. I think two or three pieces was insured. That's it. But they took all that at the moment, and that's why you come up on a fat joke. I mean, I think a lot of people uh, yeah. learned a lot about you today, and, and and this is a great way for you to tell your story. Um, the part I want to know is, and I keep going back to this, is right because I just want to know. I'm curious, right? I'm curious. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, I went in the water the other day. I was in uh, St. Martin, and I believe that when you're out in the Caribbean, you go in the morning early before anybody's out there, and then you just pray to God. You look at the clouds, you look at the water, you pray for everybody, all my sick friends, every this and this and that. Three words came out, right? Wrote it on my board. I never wrote this in my life, right? And it said organize. It said responsibility. And it said simplify. That's what it said to me while I was out there. When I got out of there, I felt great. Felt like I cleansed myself. You know, and, and I wrote it. It's on the board here, right? And I never write nothing on the board. That's how powerful and how clear it came to me. I got a friend that's fighting for his life. And I've been right praying now. for him too, uh, and, Jeff. I've been praying for him. I got you, man. Jeff, thank you, man. You know, I told you, yep. I said pray for my brother Jeff. Uh, and, and I've been praying for him hard. And I went out there, you know, and I start praying. And so what I when I tell you, uh, what I keep trying to ask you is, I know you've been going to church and you went before that. Was there a moment, just so I could know, okay? Was there a moment that you felt like, Okay, I'm gonna be a, a bishop. I'm gonna be a because obviously you from the street, you cut from the Brooklyn, you did your time like a man. You came back and you went to the church. How does someone say, "I'm going to church. I'm 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 going to be a preacher. I'm going to be a pastor." Is it like a class, a course? Is it like you study the Bible more than somebody else? Like what qualifies someone as a pastor? A bishop, like, how do you can Fat Joe come tomorrow and say, I Well, it's not that easy, but let me tell you this, Joe, it's simple. You just got to say one word, yes. You got to say one word to God and say yes. And the Bible says, and this is what you need to read you need to read Isaiah chapter six. The Bible says that God says from the throne, He says, Who shall we send? And Isaiah said, Send me, I'll go. And the Bible talks about how the cherubim, um, uh, excuse me, the seraphim, which is a praying angel, took one of the fires off of the altar and put it in his mouth. And the Bible said that the that the the coal burnt off of all of the iniquities because he was around a lot of sinful people. So at the end of the day, Joe, um, you know, th th there's a process to being a pastor. And, and, and you have to understand, you have to look at what I'm going through. What I'm going through is an attack by the enemy. There's something called the spirit of perversion. OK, and the perversion is to destroy and distort God's original intent. That's what the spirit of perversion is. And I'm going to use you as an example. Through this whole time that we've been up here on this interview, there has been one question from you to ask about the health and wellness of the church. Why? Because the enemy has perverted this entire situation to make people believe that I'm not trustworthy. And you want to know what? My wife is still crying. My daughter does not want to wear earrings. My church is crying. I had to pay for therapy. And everybody allowed the enemy to pervert their mind off of what happened to God's house. What about protecting God's house? Why are we all looking at Bishop Whitehead? I'm just a man. I'm, I, I fall short of the glory of God. What happened to the, the, the glory of the Lord? What happened to that was the church? What happened to that? It doesn't matter. Nothing else but what happened to that. And it's a spirit of perversion. And the first thing that a shepherd does, if you ever want to be a pastor, you cannot leave your sheep. The first thing you have to understand is you have to always stay focused on God. I get so much hate mail. I get so much things like people posting right here, 90,000, 90,000, because there's something out there that says that I stole $90,000 from a parishioner. Now, I have, minister, I have my ministry up here. Everybody that's in my ministry, have you ever 
saw or ever heard of that lady. Y'all know the lady that they said that Bishop took 90,000 from. And I want y'all to see, have y'all ever heard? And if you go to my, um, my Instagram, and I did it during my morning service, I said, have y'all ever heard of this woman? And they said, no, she's not a member of my church. She's not a member of my church, but I'm plastered everywhere that I took $90,000 from a parishioner of my church. And everybody, look, look, you're gonna see the nose coming up because this is my church. We don't know her. We don't know her, okay? And this is the picture that they paint about me. Bro, listen, Bishop. I've made people millionaires personally. And so the way this works is you born broke, you born alone by yourself with no clothes, no nothing. I grew up in welfare in the projects. God blessed me and gave me an opportunity and I put a bunch of other people on. I've had people I made millionaires turn around, split up with me and say, I never gave them nothing. I never took care of them. I never took care of them. So I know all about walking through this, all this while being under the microscope of all this, everything you talk about, I done did this. Like I done did this. And this is the very people that I've helped become millionaires and families and all that. And so um, I know what you're talking about, right? But I wanted you to come on here, not to point a finger at you, not to disrespect you, but to let you tell your true side of the story and talk to the people you say you're talking to. And so that's why I invited you on here. So I can, so they can learn. And I think this was great for you. And um, and I hope and pray your wife gets over it. Um, your daughter grows out of it. Uh, money could stop doing the freeze. What's my <laughs> man on the left? My man that preaches. Yeah, that boy did the men, the mean. You know them guys that go like this. <laughs> yeah. Let, let, uh, Joe, can let me say, Joe, yeah, I got you. Joe, let me say right? this, right? Uh, because, you know, I don't know how much time before we get off, but let me just say this, right, Joe? Um, we, we have lost focus on what actually happened, right? My church have been the victim, right? And I don't want this to be about me, right? And, and the truth is going to come out. Joe, do you know I'm going to be posting, right? Right when we get off, and I'm going to let you hear it first. But I'm going to be posting some documentation, right? I'm going to be posting some documentation as soon as I get off, right? Because, you know, and I'm only going to give this dude some shine right now. And I don't even want to hear about this dude no more, right? So the incident that you're talking about where me and this guy had gotten in, into an altercation, right? His name is Larry Reed, right? So he is the Wendy Williams of gospel. Remember how Wendy Williams was back in the day? Ha! He is Wendy Williams on steroids, but he goes against the gospel community. Yeah, of gospel community. Yeah, nobody knows him in the secular world until he start hashtagging me and following me. And every day he's talking about me. So, so his name is Larry Reed, right? And it's the only shine I'm giving him because his numbers is going up because of me. But let me say this, because I got to make something clear. So he's been on his live talking about how the FBI has been watching me and this and going on and y'all watch and see what the FBI going to do because he got all this money and, and he's taking this from the church and this, this, that, and the third. But watch this, Joe. And I'm a, and you, and, and listen, Joe, you gave me the platform for this. I'm about to post some documents that Larry Reed is the one who's calling the FBI on me. So I'm going to post that on my page, right? And I'm showing you, Joe, that people right are doing this and trying to do me dirty just to get numbers they don't care about what my wife is going through they don't care my seven-year-old daughter said daddy you got robbed daddy she wasn't in church that day and she saw it on tv and she's scared she's scared and we got a dude like this that don't care about nothing so all of the larry reed fans i'm about to post it i'm about to post it and it's going to say that larry reed called the FBI on the, I'm paraphrasing, on Lamar Whitehead and X, Y, and Z. Okay, so at the end of the day, people are doing things for numbers, Joe. They doing things for numbers. So what do we call them, Joe? I don't even know what we call them now. Now listen, what I'm saying to you is this, right? 
Let's end in a positive note. Your top five preachers, bishops of all time. My top five? Uh, Miles Monroe. Uh, T.D. Jakes. Um, Bishop Noel Jones. Um, hmm. I only got three, man. I only have three. That's yep. it. Miles Monroe, T D Jakes, and um and um Bishop Noel Jones. Bishop Noel Jones. Yo, thank you so much for coming on here, man. Tell your wife, uh, God bless her, man, nothing but love. Matter of fact, why don't you end this with a little one minute prayer for the people out here? It's a lot yeah. of people tuning in. Why don't you Father God, we thank you for this set time we set ourselves in agreement. We thank you, Lord Jesus. First of all, God, we thank you for your loving kindness for us better than life. Father God, forgive us for all known and unknown sins, transgressions, and iniquities that we may have committed against you. And we thank you for a great understanding today. Thank you for my brother, Fat Joe. And Father God, we lift up his friend Jeff in prayer, Father God. Allow your healing power to touch him, Father. For you say when two or three are gathered together, you're in the midst. So I ask you, Father God, to bless Fat Joe, Father God, for allowing the man of God to have his platform, God to show your glory. And Father God, I ask you, Father God, within the next 30 days, you give him increase. Deals from that he wasn't expecting, Father God, an uh, overflow of health and an overflow of money. For we believe that when you, when a man allow you to have his platform to get the glory, you will bless him. For the word say, for who you have justified, you have uh, sanctified. So we thank you right now, God, and we bless your name in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All Bishop. right, man. Love man, you, Joe. You Thank you for the opportunity. Right. Love, brother. And so there you have it. And you don't know who I know. You just don't know who I know. And so that's the bishop right there, man. Nobody going to get the man to talk like this, man. And so I tell you all the time, let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. It ain't to when you down and out that you know who got your back. Who's in your corner? Who cares? Now, if you go through something, financial, relationship, uh, and your so-called friends ain't there for you, they're not really your friends, right? And so the bishop said his side of the story. He said his piece. I tell you, put God first all the time. In good and bad times, who cares? Never forget when you was on your knees and you said, God, please get me out of this prison. God, please fix my cancer. God, please help me pay my rent. God, please help my relationship with my wife and my husband. Don't forget that when you pray and you need them at that moment, when the times is better, don't turn your back on the Lord. And so here on this show, we talk about everything. And we talk about God every single episode, no matter what, because God is great. God is the best. Shout out to my brother, DJ Khaled. He got the new single coming out with Drake, with Little Baby. It's incredible. I saw the video. We the blessed. Peace, y'all. Joe Crack. You don't know who I know. Roll us on your wrist a plain giant.